For the first 10 years, I actually grew up on Chatham Island. I've always said I, the first 10 years of my life, I had, I had my heaven here on earth. It was such a different lifestyle. It was family, family and camaraderie. But I never knew hunger. I never even knew what a, a slap or a crossword was. Because everybody worked together, but it wasn't considered work, you know. But it was such a, a peaceful, loving atmosphere. We had no clocks. The crows, the sheep, the seagulls, they were our alarm clocks. We got together, it was up early in the morning, we got up and we got breakfast going. The women, we did the cooking, you know, the cleaning. The men would go out and, you know, gather the sheep up, share them, and then decide which one they're going to slaughter. They went fishing, seal hunting, you name it. And we listened to the elders, they shared what, what they knew. It was such a happy time. There was no TV, there was not even a radio, you know, the you just sat down and there was such communication, if you know what I mean. My grandma was a midwife. Jamaic, my great-grandma, she knew, they both knew a lot of the herbs. They were teaching me. I was just starting to get to know the different herbs when, when I got sent to Cooper, so. The teaching has changed so much from from the old days. My mom, she passed away uh, three and a half years ago of diabetes. It affected her blood sugar, and her her blood was low. It's kind of hard to see my parents go through it because you never know if it can happen to yourself. I think it's kind of hard for my brother mm -hmm. and my grandma and my grandpa. Because my grandpa's old and my grandma's old. My brother Hebert is 22. Yes, at the age of 20, I was diagnosed with diabetes. And I don't know, it just it hit me all of a sudden. I didn't realize it, I thought I was just sick. I thought I just had the flu, but I was getting dehydrated. And then finally got to the point where I was barely standing and got my mother to bring me into the doctors. And I was admitted to the hospital for about four or five days before they got my sugar level under control. Well, it's affected a lot of our native people. Maybe it's the uh, diet the, we have today and the diet we had years ago because we never 
In other words, people suffered from diabetes before. And now it seems to be affecting all of us through British Columbia. I never thought I'd have it. You know, my aunt had it, my grandfather and my other grandmother. And it didn't hit my parents, so I thought I was okay. But I guess it skipped a generation. And I try and warn my brothers and how to, my little sister, how to cut down on the junk food. Because I don't want to see them going through what I'm going through right now. A lot of it has to do with, like, the goodies. Is, uh, you know, like pop and chips, candy, stuff like that. You know, our people never had that back then. And I don't know, there's just too much of it around now. It's introduced to kids as, like, they're babies. So there's some kids who grow up off it. Oh, I I've been dealing with a family. Um, she has a granddaughter. She's been pretty worried about her. She's eight, eight years old. She was 100 pounds. She got her back from up north. She got her down to 60 pounds, but she's going back and she's pretty worried because it's the same thing, chips, pop, candy, all the fast food stuff instead of going back to beans vegetables, you know, doing the different healthy foods we used to eat, you know. I grew up on a lot of stews and a lot of soups, but Jamaica put like beans, beans, every kind of vegetable that was grown in a garden, barley, um, split peas, so it, it was healthy. Jamaica, she was close to 90 when she died. My great-grandfather, Tom, he was 105 when he died. Never saw them sick. Never even saw them with a headache. But there was no additives. Everything was pure, you know. Now look at them. We buried one on Monday. Um, she was only in her early 40s. She died. And it, it, it's getting sad. It's getting sad. Well, I do daycare myself, and I don't allow the kids to have any pop, stuff like that. And I give them, like, fruits for snacks, like bananas, oranges, apples. I don't give them cookies and stuff like that. Just, like... Try and stick with fruit and sandwiches. Yeah, just try and keep them as healthy as I can when they're at my house. Hopefully that we can get to teach them how to, to switch from chips and nachos, pop, into water. There's different ways to deal with water, you know, squeeze a lemon in her or or some to flavor it if you don't like it plain, you know, or even a different teas. I can remember my Jamaic and my grandma making dandelion tea, you know, you go out and pick out the rose hips and different stuff and anything and everything you can think of and makes great teas. Yeah, I actually cut down on some of the regular stuff like birthday parties you won't have very much stuff because it's got too much sugar and it actually I'm actually scared of getting diabetes it's like sad to most people that have it because they can't do much in their life no more that's what the younger people have to think about is how far they want to go with their life and what they eat and their lifestyle I play basketball with my friends and I usually go for walks down from my house to the point. Not to lazy around, 
go run around with your other friends, go to the lake or something. Really look after yourself and keep healthy. Eat healthy, try and stay away from the junk food, the fast food, pop, chips, candy, stuff like that. I know they keep saying you're not supposed to look back, but it'll always be my home. But as I said, everything was natural. Everything was from the sea or from, from here, from the earth.